Hi! In this video, we will explore how to evaluate an AI agent that uses tools like file search, web search, or computer use. We will build a mock AI agent, generate a small test, and walk through how to evaluate the quality of AI agent answers. We will also measure what AI agent actually does, like how many steps it takes, what tools it uses, and how much content it consumes. Generally, it's all about making agent behavior visible and measurable. Let's dive into it. To build an agent, I'm going to use OpenAI Engines library. If you did not use it before, please install it before you proceed. I already have it installed, so together with the other libraries, I'm going to import agent, runner, and web search tool from agents. Else I'm going to trace every single step our agent does, so I'm going to import Tracely. And we will do quite a lot of evaluation with help of Evidently, so let's import things from Evidently as well. Here we go. Now let's create a couple of clients, like Evidently client and OpenAI client. For having OpenAI client, I would need to import OpenAI as well. Yeah, all done. And now I can proceed for our agent. I'm going to do something very brief and simple, because our main purpose is evaluation, so my agent will be the following. I can give a name here, it will be Assistant, Elsa Instructions, it will be very short, like your helpful assistant, and the model will be GPT-4.1. Elsa, I'll allow my agent to use some tools, and in our case, it's going to be only a web search tool. It doesn't necessarily mean that agent is going to use web search tool every single time I ask something, but now the agent knows that this tool is accessible and in case it needs it, it can use it. Now I have my agent and let us go with a trial run. I'm going to just ask a very simple question like what the weather in London is like today, but actually to answer it properly, an agent needs to access web search tool. Why so? Because it doesn't know what is today and what is the weather today, right? So it needs this tool. And please be careful with synchronous mode in Jupyter Notebook or Collab. It's important because Jupyter Notebook has its own event loop already started, right? And in case I would try to run my runner in a sync mode, it will try to allocate one more event loop and crash. Well, I'm going to do it in async mode. You can see it with help of await word and it's going to be OK. It's done, and my result object is generated. This object has a lot of fields, and I will start from final output so that we can check what's the answer. And here it is. It's pretty nice. It knows that it's Wednesday, May 21st, 2025, so it's nice. Yeah, I like it. The weather is definitely cloudy, so everything is correct. Now let's explore our responses, because it contains a lot of useful information. I'm going to print it step by step, so that you can easily read it. Oh, it's only a single step. Well, it does make sense, because the question is not that tricky. And you can see that there are a lot of useful information. We can see that our agent used web search, which makes sense. It's completed successfully. Right? And there are a lot of things also available, like what is the answer, what tools were used, and also some information about usage. It's right there, right? So we can see input tokens, output tokens, total tokens. A lot of things to track, to measure, and to trace, I guess. Now we are happy with our agent. Yes, it's brief, but it's nice. And let's proceed with testing dataset. We already prepared some nice questions and answers, and the trick here is that to answer for some of those questions, an agent actually needs to use web search. For others, it doesn't. So we will assess not only an answers for our agent, but also the correct use of tools, and maybe we will see some input-output tokens just to add more visibility. Here is a question list. Reference answers. You can see that to answer a question like what is hugging face, Agent doesn't need to search anything, it probably already knows what it is, but like to answer a question what is the latest version of ChatGPT, it needs to web search. Here is our reference answers, the correct ones, and actually 
having those questions, I, like an expert, can kind of assume where it needs to use web search call or not, and I can create LC list of expected tools. That's the work you should do when you evaluate the quality of your AI agent. You can come up with some expectations of tool usage or reference answers, then generate it as a data set and use it for validation. That's exactly what is happening now. So here is my assumption on expected tools. If I have empty tuple, no tools is expected. If I have web search, then web search is expected for this question. Let me generate it, and I will quickly create my data frame with my expectations. I call it validation frame, and let me quickly show it to you. The structure is very plain, right? Question, answer, unexpected tool. I really like it. Now let's proceed with evaluation. First of all, I'm going to need to create a project, a place where we are going to start everything related to our task. I call it LLM course agent evaluation. And let me also initiate tracing because in order to generate some evaluations, I'm going to ask those questions to my agent. Then I'm going to trace what is happening. And then I'm going to run some evaluations with help of descriptors and reports. So uh, yeah, here is my tracing. I will call it just agent testing. Project ID. Yeah, it's needed to be a dot here. Yeah, now let's go and see what is the project and, oh, I guess we don't need it. Here is a project and let us see tracing. Yeah, now it's empty, but I just want to copy export ID from here and let's go back. We have everything. And in order to keep our traces quite nice, I'm going to implement a couple of functions. I will start from ask question function as an entry point. This function basically generates the answers for questions with help of agent. It's also async because we are going to use async run and it uses question as an input argument. Then we try to generate a response and also calculate some statistics on the way. This is a tricky moment and I will comment on it on this next step. So we calculate some statistics with help of extract agent stats function. We will explore it next. And also we try to return the final output and those calculated statistics. And if it's not possible for some reason, we raise an error. That's our main function, ask question. Also some statistics are here. So let's explore what happens here in extract agent stats function. It's there. We also trace it, so you can see that both function has this decorator trace event. And here I would ask to ignore my response list because I didn't need it twice. So what's happening here? Previously we saw how many data we have for every single step our agent takes. It's very valuable information. It's interesting to analyze it to see what's agent behavior, right? And what we are going to do here is to decide whether we are going to log everything to parse and understand it later, or we are going to derive some specific statistics to analyze this exactly. So there are two options you can follow. I would go for the second one and select what statistics to trace and to track. I'm going to use input tokens, output tokens, and tool types. Basically what I'm going to do is to aggregate all this information from all steps my agent takes to answer a single question so that I have already aggregated statistics. That's what's happening now. So I go through responses and summarize my input tokens, output tokens, and create a list of tools which were used on the way, right? Also, I aggregate how many iterations there were. So basically it's the length of my responses. That's my statistics. Okay, so we have very brief statistics, but already very useful. And now we can proceed with our evaluations. The next step would be to generate answers with help of our ask question function. Let us do that. And I guess I would just paste here our expert ID so that later we can download our tracing dataset from Evident project. It's done. Let's take a look at traces from the project. We are already here. So let's view. Yeah, we have all our 10 questions there. Let's check a random one. That's how it looks like. We have our main function and one more function which generates some statistics. 
And here we have some span attributes. It's question, response, and you can go to our child span here. And here is information about tokens, input and output, iterations, and tools. In this case, we didn't use any tool. So quite nice. Okay, going back to our code. Let's load these traces and get tracing data frame. Now what I'm going to do is come up with my final data frame to evaluation. Remember to previously we had validation data frame, which included what? It included expected tools and it included reference answers. So now in order to be able to run validations, we need to combine those expected tools, reference answers, these actually generated answers with help of agent and all other statistics we collected during our experiment run. Let's do that. I'm just going to merge our tracing dataset with validation dataset. I'm going to use question as the column to merge. We have ask question question from our tracing frame and we had question from our validation frame and it's going to be a left merge. Let me show you the result. So yeah, it's actually quite long because we have a lot of columns here. But still, it's important to understand that we do have everything we need. It's question, it's response, some statistics. Well, let me turn it like this. Yeah, the question about hugging face. And our reference answer, unexpected tools. So we do have everything to run our checks. Now let's proceed with our checks. And remember this nice binary classification from template related to contradictions. We created it previously for our rack, and now I'm going to reuse it, because here also we have a reference answer, we have generated answer, and we can check whether there are some contradictions between those answers. And as I'm going to use the same contradiction check second times, it makes sense to save it. It looks pretty useful. Let me copy my criteria from here, and access cloud again. We can see that here I can create a new prompt. Let me call it contradiction check. Or contradictions check. I think like this. So I have it. And this is a very nice place where I can, I think, store my criteria. I don't need this bracket. Definitely. And yeah, that's a very nice way how I can save it. It has some versioning and we can access it later by this prompt ID if we need it. Okay, good. And let's go back to our code. Let's actually create this contradiction check. And here is one more descriptor I would like to introduce to you now. This descriptor is called item match. The idea here is that we are going to check whether our string has all the items listed in the second column. And that's exactly suited to our case with expected tools. So we have a string with all tools which were used during answering the question for every single question. That's what we collected with help of our stats function, right? And also we have a column with the list of expected tools to use. So we're gonna ask evidently to check whether expected tools were presented in the list of used tools. That's what's happening here in item match. So here is the place to search for tools. Here is the place where we listed expected tools. Mode all, so we check for all tools we expected. And here is an ls tool match. Let's implement list of our descriptors. We're gonna have only two checks here, correct tools and non-contradictory answer. I think it's a really great start. Now let's create our evaluation dataset. We are doing it from pandas, merge data frame, data definition, let's go for default one, and our descriptors. It's done. And let me just preview a couple of things because I wanted to show you how this tool match thing looks like. I think it's pretty interesting. So that's column which includes list of tools used. This is expected tools. And we see that tool match is like correct everywhere. But it was a pretty simple data set, right? So it's kind of expected. That's what has happened. Okay, wrapping up. Our last step would be generate a report. It includes text evaluations. Right? Here it is, tool match 
perfect, contradictions, mostly nice, but we do have two contradictory answers. Let's upload it to the cloud, to the project, and let's see how it looks like. Let's navigate to reports, find our report, it's easy, it's a single one, and here it is, too much perfect, contradictions non-perfect, let's see what we have now here. I'm going to go to the dataset, and you can see that there are quite a lot of useful information in the dataset. It's ID of our question, timestamp, link to traces, question, generated response, some statistics related to tokens, like, let us see, I guess it's input tokens, yeah, then the next is output tokens, right, steps, question again, and reference answers. So it's very nice. Let us go for our contradictions because we know that there are some issues there. Contradictions. And let's see what has happened here. So to analyze it deeply, I would go to trace itself. But it's very convenient. And let me explore everything here. So I think I don't need it. Yeah, and let me go to the question directly. When has the... AI Act been adapted. Okay, here is the response, which includes links, noise. Well, looks pretty good to me. Let's go back to the dataset and see why we had some contradictions. Here it is. So, reasoning. The answer states that it was adapted in March 2024 and then contradicts that yeah, it was adopted in May 2024. I believe it's interesting enough to raise a flag here and share it with your expert. Maybe together we will be able to create some hypothesis of what's going on and check whether you need to update something in your agent. And I'm going to wrap it up here. We just checked how we can make agent behavior more visible and measurable, and I believe it might inspire you to add some visibility to your agents as well. Thank you for watching.